Hey, happy Monday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now, our hurricane season is about to ramp up in some ways, and it's going to change dramatically as we go towards the end of September into October. You see, we do have a disturbance over here that we need to watch for over here towards the Gulf of Mexico. As this goes towards that way, it is going to get a surface low. You see all the convection forming in the system. But with these low troughs that we're getting to, we're starting to come to the season where we get a bunch of cold fronts that come in. And this is just going to yank all that precipitation over in this direction and bring a lot of flooding towards Florida, a little bit of the southeast, and the Bahamas with all this tropical moisture as it reaches this way. Really only one weather model is showing any kind of formation. The rest of them is showing to be very weak. But this pattern we're going into, because we have multiple systems in the MDR, all of these are going to go into the Atlantic. We have a weak, high pressure in the Atlantic. These are not going all the way across. But these other ones right here is the ones that you need to watch for. This one's a little further to the south. This will make it a little further to the west, and it won't get pulled around into the Atlantic like the rest of the waves. But I'm still showing that this is not no big threat, neither. It might do something in the Caribbean. Maybe get pulled out and be more of a problem with tropical moisture. But the pattern we're going into is we're about to have this big system over here in the northwest. This is a big AR atmospheric river. It is bringing all this heavy rainfall towards northwest Washington and Oregon. If you've been watching my videos all last week, you already know about this. We're about to change our pattern. Instead of going to a little trough, we're about to go into a big trough in a big ridge this is going to bring below average temperatures a lot of cool air on the west coast a lot of heat not super bad but a warm up on the center to the east coast of the u.s well these cold fronts are going to either bring all these storms all these potential tropical storms potential hurricanes out into the atlantic or it's going to create some front induced lows now normally when this happens we get a boundary of these cold fronts as it comes shooting on down and we get possible front-induced lows that do form up. Now, that is what I'm seeing is going to be our main threat as we go into the end of September into October. MDR pretty much is going to be shut off going into Atlantic from the weak high pressure, guys. We're going to watch for something close. So I'm going to give you all the latest updates. You've never been here before. Make sure you subscribe. I am all year along. I will also put timestamps in the description. That way you can go to any part of the video you want to go see. The temperatures or the tropics of what's going on. Thank you again for your time. Now let's get into your information. And just like I showed you before, this is exactly what we see as we go into September. Then waves circle around. Sometimes they can make it into the Western Caribbean, into the Gulf. They end up circling around. And as you go through October, it takes pretty much the Gulf out of the scenario. We still get things that go into the Gulf, but not as much as what circles around by Florida, by the Western Caribbean, and goes out by the East Coast. But you can see this here. Some of our tracks do make it into the Gulf of Mexico, but the majority of them, as we go into October, will circle around as it goes around by these cold fronts, getting pushed to the east because of a weak high pressure in the Atlantic, and southern Florida usually is the potential problem. Now you can see this on the latest update with the Euro. The next four days is all you get. As you get some of that dry air, but you get that AR, you get that atmospheric river that goes across Washington and Oregon, even goes down California as well, not too far. While we get some of that rainfall, this system is not bringing a lot, but it's bringing some rainfall towards the northeast. While all this tropical moisture in the Caribbean goes around and goes right over florida with all of that and if you go further on a euro you can see that actually as we get these cold fronts that come on down that it shows that we actually could get that very deep trough on the west coast very high ridge bringing all those warm temperatures also and cooler temperatures towards the east coast there will be a time we all will be cooler at night cooler on the west coast as well and warmer over the central u.s but at the same time, when you get these cool fronts, you could get those front-induced lows, could appear up. And this one shows over here by the Gulf, but it's literally the end of the run, guys. So don't see that as law. But we got to watch these cold fronts, because these cold fronts can produce. And I'm showing possibility for the East Coast. So you can already see here from Weather Prediction Center, they already have a risk for below-average cold temperatures coming in for September 30th through October 6th, and this is only the beginning, guys. You can also see this pattern change from National Weather Service for the next 6 to 10 day temperature probability. You're going to be well below average temperatures on the West Coast 
and well above average for this time of year in all this red. This don't mean the hundreds are coming back. It just means it's above average temperatures than you normally get right now. So you can see this when you look at your data. So when you look at your Arctic Constellation, your AO, you can see as you go into October, you're going to get these dips of colder air that comes on in. Now we're going to keep the cooler air passing through all the way to the beginning of October. Now GFS takes it the most extreme. GFS always takes it the most extreme. But you can see between the Canadian, which is the green, and the Euro, which is the blue, that they're all agreeing to this somewhat of a dip of colder air is coming in. Also, when you look at your EPO, your East Pacific Oscillation, lets you know if you're going to a high ridge or a deep trough of something coming in from the West Coast. If you have a deep trough on the West Coast, you're going to get a high ridge towards the center of the U.S., possibly all the way to the East Coast. So as you take a look at your EPO, you can see right here for your West Coast that your East Pacific Oscillation, your jet stream on the West Coast, is going to go into a deep trough as you go into the beginning of October. This is that cooler air. And as you go through the beginning of October towards the first week or beyond, even a deeper trough coming into our U.S. is going to put a high ridge on the rest of the U.S. of even colder air coming in. And once again, of course, GFS takes it the most extreme. But some cold air is coming in for October. So you can see it here on your jet stream that as you come in, you can get a little trough coming on with that atmospheric river. And that's going to last all the way to the end of September with chances of that deep trough of colder air. But you see how it builds that deep trough all the way to the end of September, right over the western side of the U.S., and it builds that high ridge over the, the rest of the U.S. And you can watch also that it stays that deep all the way into October, and it can't really go that far because of Euro, but this is showing still deep all the way into October, and GFS is showing the same thing, that it stays even deeper right there, bringing cooler air to further southern states in the west coast, while it keeps that big ridge towards the east coast. And you can see this with the GFS. So as it comes in, we get that deep trough towards the west coast, towards the end of September. And as you go into October, it goes even deeper, guys. Another deep trough all the way into the first week. So this is going to last for a while with this pattern. We're going to have two cold fronts come through, but this cooler air on the west coast, this deep trough is going to come on in and it's going to go on a higher ridge towards the center of the U.S. to the east coast. And it is going to bring that cooler air right across the U.S. as that comes across on the jet stream with that in October. So you can see here from your tropopause that you have all these warm temperatures coming in. And you have these cool anomalies overnight on the east side of the U.S. as well. While you have cooler air coming in from the northwest, you get that deep trough of cooler air coming all the way to the end of September. And then you get an even deeper trough that hangs out as you go into October. Now, Euro can't see quite that far, so you can see it better with the GFS. You get that cooler air coming all the way to the east coast of the U.S. You get that warm up all the way into Canada, and you get cooler air on the northwest. But as we go into October, it goes even deeper with cooler air coming on down as we go towards the end of September, beginning of October. And then we get that next trough coming on down as we go into October bringing a lot of cooler temperatures towards the western side of the U.S., and this will track all the way across as it goes further across. And you can see this is going to be colder temperatures. Now, in the beginning of it, you're going to have a warm-up all the way towards the center of the U.S., towards the east coast. Not too bad. Some people's going to be in the 90s, so it's not going to be quite 100, but it is going to be the 90s coming back in some 80s, while your highest for the northwest will be in the 50s and 60s. Now, you cool down at night, it will be in the 70s, but you stay cool in the 50s towards the east coast of the U.S., but cooler air on the west coast of the U.S., and it is going to be really cool. The higher elevations is going to be in the high 20s to low 30s. Matter of fact, with your wind chill, it is going to feel like it is in the 20s as we go all the way through this pattern, guys. And that's going to start bringing the snow as well. Even the euro is shown after five days, potential Major snowfall is going to start coming into the, the mountains for the higher elevations, and sooner or later it's going to come even lower for everyone else. GFS has seen the same thing at the Euro has seen, a little more sporadic, but definitely major snowfall. And if you go a little further, maybe some more coming through the upper Midwest and north central plains. So we definitely got snow starting to come into the play now. 
But this is also going to change our hurricane season. So as we get these cool fronts coming through, guys, this is going to transition big time. We're going to get a lot of shear that's going to start coming all the way from the south, all the way towards the southeast, all the way towards the east coast. And that shear is going to hang around for a long time with this pattern that we have. But definitely this trough, these cool fronts, is going to change our hurricane season as well. A lot of shear. But when we look at the latest update from the potential velocity anomaly, you can see we have a lot of sinking air going on all the way until the beginning of October, guys. That's why I don't see that wave doing anything. It's going to try and do something as it goes out to the east, northeast. We can also see that we stay pretty much in an unfavorable environment over here, and we stay favorable for the far western Caribbean into the Gulf, into the eastern Pacific as we go towards the beginning of October, the first 10 days. And the Euro is still showing that we have an anomaly coming in the beginning of October, another one still coming at the 10th of October, and an even stronger one coming at the 20th of October. And all of these are in that path, guys. So if these troughs does not create cheer and push them away, we really need to look at the charts for these times. The first five days for October, the 10th of October, and the 20th of October, three systems that could form up in our area as we start finishing up our hurricane season, going through October, and finally going towards November. Now, all the sea surface temperatures are all above average. So anything could form if there was no shear. There is still a lot of warm temperatures for this systems to grow up. You can see where all the cooler temperatures are from everything that has formed in the Atlantic. The Caribbean and the Gulf is still ready. And still showing our latest update that the chance for a strongest low pressure is going to be over the Western Caribbean and over our Gulf of Mexico, guys. I really think that this surface low might form up somewhere over the southern half of the Bay of Campeche and just be suppressed by this cold front and cannot come north. If it does, it will just rip all this precipitation, all this rainfall towards Florida. And that is what we're seeing this morning in the model runs, that all this rainfall, all this precipitation is going to try and form up something as it goes towards the Western Caribbean, get suppressed down by these cold fronts, and bring all that precipitation towards the southeast and bring y'all some flooding as all this stays suppressed down. As you go into the beginning of October, and as you get the next wave coming on in, as you go into October, another cold front comes in and keeps all of that suppressed down. Now we have some that's come a little northern, way down the charts, way down the road that we might have to watch and prepare for. This will change. But all the way into the beginning of October, this is all going to be suppressed. we got to watch for front-induced lows. But other than that, everything pretty much is just going to be a rainfall event. Now, the only thing that's showing any concern this morning is the GO satellite showing that that could form up in the Gulf, get some kind of system coming in, get stronger right here towards Louisiana, and then get pushed to the west, maybe towards Texas. But that is the only model run that is showing that. Even when you look with the GFS, naturally overdoes it. It's just bringing a lot of low pressure building up over the Western Caribbean, group of thunderstorms, tries to get a low pressure and just can't because it's getting suppressed down by all these cold fronts and just gets pushed away, guys. Now, previous runs show that it could get squeezed right over Florida and Bahamas, maybe get a system forming out there, maybe a front-induced low as that goes out through the east-northeast. We can also see with the Euro that it does get some low pressure forming up, but it's nothing really going to come out of that. Even National Hurricane Center says it's going into unfavorable conditions while all that builds up and maybe get a front-induced low later on. Even when you check the chance for a tropical depression with the Euro for the next 10 days, guys, you see how you have those disturbances in MDR, you have FLEEP, you also got to invest. It's more like you can go west, northwest, got to watch it. It might be a little bounce towards Haiti and Dominican Republic at the last second right here. But that other tropical wave is going west, maybe right into the Pacific. It will climb towards the Western Caribbean and try and get some kind of formation there. More likely will go into the Eastern Pacific and not be a threat. You can even see this when you look at possible cyclone locations as everything in MDR goes in Atlantic. 
all the chances for the surface low to try to build up the whole time and just can't. And then what we really got to watch for is maybe a front induced low right off the east coast that could come back and bite us. So that's what we definitely got to keep our eyes on as we get these cold fronts. And flooding. You can see this from Weather Prediction Center. Next seven days, how it builds up. Two days, three days, five days, seven days. All that tropical moisture getting pulled out to the east, northeast. I know some of y'all need some rainfall. This is a lot of flooding. All of this orange is all five going towards seven inches of rainfall. All down the northern and eastern, all down the eastern side, all down the southern side of Florida. All five plus inches expected. Plus all this dark red. This is all three and four inches as well. A lot of heavy rainfall coming. As you go three days to five days, it jumps dramatically. And five days to seven days, it just keeps adding up because of this pattern that we're going into. This also includes the AR, the atmospheric river. It's over here towards northwest. So just the next three days, next 72 hours of National Weather Service, you have all this heavy rainfall expected. Plus what's coming across the southeast you do have some coming across the Great Lakes on this storm, but it's nothing compared to what these guys are about to get. So in the Northwest, you have a lot of rainfall coming just until Thursday morning. In the next 69 hours, you're getting one to two inches of rainfall from this atmospheric river coming, mostly for the coast of Northern Oregon and Washington, showing three plus, maybe even getting four up here towards Northern Washington. Also for the coast of Northern California, you get one to two inches of rainfall. And the atmospheric river on the West Coast is getting some winds, some possible damaging winds. In the next 48 hours, 40 and 50 miles per hour wind gusts coming across Northern California, Oregon, and Washington. It's even going into Canada. A good thing about this atmospheric river, this pattern that we're going into, is this is going to be perfect for putting out those Canadian wildfires. And it is going to be affecting the southeast as well. The two areas. You have some going on the coast of Texas. Y'all getting one to two inches. Also going across southern Louisiana, southern Alabama, southern Georgia, and the Panhandle. And then all of Florida. Florida Keys, everyone included. One to two inches just in the next 69 hours. But you can see here from HRRR, all this precipitation is going across the southeast. This is just for the next two days. That's going to continue for multiple days, seven, maybe eight days down the road. While you have that system moving across the Great Lakes, bringing all that one plus inch of rainfall as that comes on through. Not really, no severe weather outlooks for this. Maybe a little bit of hail. But you can also see for the west coast, this big AR, this big atmospheric river is just coming around for a couple of days, bringing a lot of storms. For tomorrow, just a lot of storms. Then as maybe get a little closer towards the, the center of the storm, maybe bring some stronger winds as we go towards midnight. But thank you so much for your time. God bless you all and your family. Sorry I've been gone for a couple of days. I've been trying to get this house to get my family moved in a safer place like crazy. And anyone that's ever done that before, you know how hectic this could be. And it's still not done yet but i wanted to give you this update i will start doing my uploads back again tomorrow morning but until then i will see you all tomorrow morning before i go psalm 143 verse 10. teach me to do thy will for thou art my god thy spirit is good lead me into the land of uprightness amen as we struggle every single day, we should always work on getting better and better every single day. After all, that's what it means to be Christian. Remember, all glory always goes to God. Our Father in heaven, Yahweh, and may he always bless you and keep you safe every day of your life. Forever. <laughs> Amen! <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Amen. I'll see you all in the morning.